We will unveil it seeds in order. No surprise who we find at the top with that championship mindset and just one blemish on the record. Oklahoma is the top seed with the player of the year, Jada Coleman, and the pitcher of the year, Jordy Ball, as the Big 12 champions. Once again, they ride a 43-game winning streak. Who will they start out with? The pride of Hofstra, champions of the Colonial, with a walk-off from Angelina Iapolo and also featuring Megan Giordano with some home run power and nearly 50 RBIs. So the Sooners in the pride will get things going. Also featured at Marita Hines Field in Norman. How about a matchup that features the Missouri Tigers and at large out of the SEC with Alex Honnold and Jenna Laird leading the way. Just how many SEC schools might we see in this year's bracket? We will see a familiar face from the Pac-12 and a former national champion, the Cal Bears, led by McKenna Smith. And they are an at-large choice. They will join Missouri, Hofstra, and Oklahoma in Norman. So the top seed Sooners, of course, they can stay in the neighborhood and make it all the way to Oklahoma City, not far from home, Michelle. Well, this Oklahoma team so strong, number one in the country because they are number one in offense, pitching, and defense. This is a complete team. Jordy Ball in the circle has been outstanding. But Jada Coleman, Tayari Jennings, up for USA Player of the Year. This is a team that puts up a lot of runs, a lot of fun to watch. Championship mindset has done them well. 51-1, and one, the best record of all time, belongs to UCLA in 1992, 54-2. They're chasing history. Might the number two seed, UCLA Bruins, block that path? The champions of the Pac-12 regular season with the player of the year, Maya Brady, and the pitcher of the year, Megan Faramo. And they will seek a 13th national championship and a path that begins with the Lopes of Grand Canyon. Champions of the WAC. They got some pop in those bats. And they will uh, head out to Easton Stadium in Westwood with Kristen Fifield and Ramsey Lopez over 140 runs batted in. Who else is going to be heading to Los Angeles? Well, just down the road is San Diego State, champions of the Mountain West. They won the tournament for the first time with most outstanding player Jill Sellis. And who will they open up with? The Liberty Flames, an A-Sun at large with 25-game winner Carly Keeney. So the Flames get a trip out to Southern California with Dr. Dot Richardson going back to her alma mater for matchups that will start on Friday. And of course, this is double elimination format. One team advancing out of each spot here. Amanda. Yeah, this UCLA team is such a nice blend of experience and rookies with the freshman Megan Grant and Jordan Woolery. And then, of course, they have their ace in the circle, Megan Framo, and Brooke Yana is the lefty, the transfer who has been pitching really well. This UCLA team, number two overall in batting average, top 10 ERA, and number seven in scoring. All right, UCLA, the overall number two seed in this year's tournament. Time to move on now to the overall number three seed. And another team that will be able to play at home, another team that is a regular season champion and a tournament titleist as well with a walk-off for Florida State to win the ACC, led by Pitcher of the Year, Kat Sandercock, a team that won it all in 2018. They'll be home at Seminole Softball Complex in Tallahassee. Who's going to be there? How about the Marist Red Foxes? Champions of the Metro Atlantic, their first time since 2016 with tournament most outstanding player Kylie Myers and pitcher Putin, uh, Peyton Pusey for Marist. So they will open up this weekend against the three seed Florida State. Who else is going to be in Tallahassee? Well, it's UCF, the American champions, and their most outstanding player, Sarah Willis. Second consecutive American crown for UCF. It's all about protecting the queen, protecting those pitchers for the Knights. This is a terrific region for pitchers because it also features Donnie Goldburn and South Carolina, an at-large selection who opened a lot of eyes by making it to the SEC finals. Oh, that is the place to be. 
Nice backyard pool in Columbia for their watch party tonight. They start out with the Knights of UCF. Remember, Florida State got knocked out last year in the regional by an SEC school. Could be trouble brewing for South Carolina here, Michelle. Yeah, well, this Florida State team, they are driven. Just a lot of fun to watch. Kat Sandercock, McKenna Reed in the circle, so strong. But Michaela Edinburgh has been great behind the dish. A lot of power. Janai Kerr has been strong as of late. Very good defensively as well with Kelly Mudge, Josie Muffley. This is a complete team. Oh, and by the way, Florida State loves to run in Creole's <laughs> crew. Some chaos out there. And the they, they will be hungry. Yeah, lots of speed yeah. on the bases for FSU. Let's move on now to the overall four seed in this year's tournament. And it is the Tennessee Lady Vols. They got the SEC sweep this year of the regular season and the tournament led by Kiki Malloy and Ashley Rogers, both on that top ten list for National Player of the Year honors. They will be home at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. With head coach Karen Weekly, this year's SEC Coach of the Year, getting set to face the Horizon champions, the Norse of Northern Kentucky, led by senior pitcher Lauren Hicks, who won all three games in their tournament to get the automatic bid. Who else is going to be in Knoxville? Well, how about the Louisville Cardinals, an at-large out of the ACC? Oh, boy, we got some home run hitters. HR alert. <laughs> Taylor Roby, 22 of them. She also can sling it with 10 wins. Also 400 hitter Corby Otis. Speaking of home run hitters, the Indiana Hoosiers, uh, they got a few of them, led by the Big Ten Player of the Year, Taryn Kern and Brianna Copeland and Taylor Minnick. Pitchers beware. A lot of swingers going to be in Knoxville, Tennessee this weekend looking to put on a home run derby. And it is the four seed Tennessee, Amanda, the one to beat. Yeah, and shout out to Indiana for that celebration. That's been the best so far. But they'll <laughs> be headed to Knoxville against a Tennessee team with a ton of depth in all parts of the game. And one of the deepest pitching staffs in the country with Ashley Rogers, Carlin Pickens, Peyton Gottschall. I mean, they are so deep in the circle. Of course, Kiki Malloy, their leadoff hitter, leads the country with 23 home runs. And Boo Gibson and Zeta Pooney had so much power in their lineup. All right, ladies, time to get some tongues a wagon because we are going to unveil the five seed and there will be some oohs and ahs because the five seed goes to the Crimson Tide of Alabama out of the SEC as an at-large but oh look there's some oohs and ahs there in Tuscaloosa the big question will Montana Fouch be good to go they showed a lot of heart without her in the SEC tournament of course, the first team ever from the Southeastern Conference to win a national championship in 2012. Going to have to get the bats going to beat the Long Island Sharks, champions of the Northeast. Shout out to Roy Cortman in his 29th season, led by RBI leader Gabby Padilla. So Alabama, the five with Long Island, as well as the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee, champions of Conference USA, Shelby Sargent, was the most outstanding player. Six doubles in the tournament. Laura Mueller also has some home run pop. So Middle Tennessee will be heading to the Rhodes House in T-Town, as will the Bears of Central Arkansas. One of the big surprises nationwide. Champions of the A-Sun, their first A-Sun title. They not have not one, but two 20-game winners in Kayla Beaver and Jordan Johnson. Is opportunity knocking based on who is going to be healthy in Tuscaloosa for Alabama, Smitty? Yeah, absolutely. I think the big question is Montana Fouts. Is she able to come back from that injury? And also, they have great arms in the circle with Alex Salter and Jada Torrance. If they can limit runs, they let that offense get some runs up on the board. Billy Dowling, Kenley Callen has just been outstanding as a freshman. Ashley Prangy, though, home run leader for Alabama. I saw a lot of them with their notebooks taking notes, so it'll be interesting to see how this Alabama team does here at the five spot. If you're wondering why, check out their top 10 wins and their yep. top 25 wins. The committee really like that for Bama. How about the number six overall seed in this year's NCAA tournament? They got to get some giddy up, the Cowgirls, and turn things around. It's Oklahoma State. A semifinalist last year at the Women's College World Series, paced by transfer 400 hitter Rachel Becker. So Oklahoma State will be home at Cowgirl Stadium in Stillwater. 
and they will try and start the road back to the Women's College World Series, and it will begin with the UMBC Retrievers. I got a lot of hardware right there. <laughs> America East champs, I think that's one, two, three, four. Yes, it is four in a row, led by tournament MVP Madison Wilson. Who else is headed to Stillwater? How about the Nebraska Huskers, an at-large bid out of the Big Ten with Billy and Brooke Andrews and 20-game winner Courtney Wallace. Big sigh of relief for Nebraska. They do indeed get in, and now we'll try to make some noise. First up, the Wichita State Shockers, an at-large out of the American, led by Sydney McKinney, who leads the country in batting average over 500. And oh, by the way, they have a pair of wins over Oklahoma State this season, Amanda. Yeah, and Oklahoma State definitely earned this seed back in February and March. Haven't been playing great as of late, but if they can channel who they were at the beginning of the season, this is clearly one of the best teams in the country. They can hit for a top batting average. They have Kelly Maxwell, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the country, along with Lexi Kilfoyle and Kyra Acock. Been impressed how they round out their pitching staff. Look for Kylie Naomi and Rachel Becker, as you mentioned, Beth. Rachel Becker, one of the best leadoff hitters in the country. Lost 11 of 13, but if you're wondering why they got this high seed, the NCAA CAA selection committee will tell you full body of work. So there you have it in Stillwater. Now we're starting to put up some game times for you as well. How about the seven seed? We're going to head out west to Seattle and the Washington Huskies national champions in 2009. Twice the runners up in this tournament led by a senior Bailey Klingler and the freshman Ruby Malin. And Washington will stay home at Husky Softball Stadium to open up this weekend in the regionals against the Northern Colorado Bears, champions of the big sky, led by Alyssa Wenzel. Who else is going to be headed to the Pacific Northwest? Long way from home, but they're happy to be there. The Cowgirls of McNeese, champions of the Southland, thanks to Reese Reina's walk-off home run in the eighth inning in the final. They have wins over LSU and UW this season. They will start with an at-large out of the Big Ten, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota, and the Big Ten Pitcher of the Year, Autumn Peace. Beautiful day in the Midwest today, and the Golden Gophers are happy that they will start things out this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, double elimination. And let's talk Washington, Smitty. Uh, this Washington team, a lot of fun to watch. They can pitch it with Ruby Malin, the freshman. 16 wins on the year, but it's Bailey Klingler, who is just having a great year as well. 11 home runs, a over 400 batting average. Sammy Reynolds, Madison Husky. This is a team that can put up a lot of runs. They play great defense. And when you put that all together, it's a winning combination for Washington. And there you see those games will start Friday night on ESPN Plus with Washington at 9 Eastern. Okay, we're building the drama because this eight seed will be the last team that has a chance to stay home in the regionals and the Supers as a host. And it will be a first time Supers host if they can get there. It is the Duke Blue Devils grabbing the eight seed. They were a road super regional team the last time around. Can they stay at home? And it's been the freshman leading the way. Donna Jennings, Amina Vega, Cassidy Kurds are a no hitter in the tournament. And Anna Gold swings a big bat for Duke. They will stay at home to take on the Patriots of George Mason for the first time, champions of the Atlantic 10, hashtag be dauntless Patriots. They won an extra innings over Loyola Chicago, led by Allie Raley, the MVP, as opponents hit sub 200. So they will start out with Duke in Durham. Who else is going to be in town? How about the Camels of Campbell with their third consecutive Big South championship? Claudia Ware, the most outstanding player, she hit over 500 in the postseason. They are back in the NCAA tournament again, and they will open up with an at-large out of Conference USA, the 49ers of Charlotte, and their 20-game winner, Sam Bress. So Charlotte, they can hop on the bus 
and roll on down the road, Amanda, and see what they can do against the Duke Blue Devils. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I feel like this Duke team has flown under the radar all year, and this is going to be a competitive regional with them. And you mentioned it, the amount of freshmen that have made an impact for them in the circle up at the plate is what's been stood out for me. Anna Gold with 18 home runs. She leads the team. But Jennings, Davis, and Vega up at the top of the lineup, so strong. And the way that freshman Cassidy Curd has just burst onto the season, the lefty with spin, compliments Jay. Taylor Wright so well as she's more down in the zone. All right, there you go. The top eight seeds of the tournament and the teams that will be heading to those sites on campus Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Double elimination action, and there you go. If the seeds held, it's happened just three times in over three decades that all eight seeds have reached the Women's College World Series. But there you go, the top eight according to the selection committee, Holly Rowe. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship Selection Special. Presented by Capital One. It's hour one of our two hours of coverage. Got the seven innings after party coming right up next as you check out some of the other watch parties around the country as teams find out where they fit into the field of 64. We've shown you one through eight seeds. Now let's go nine through 16. Again, these are teams that will be home to host the regional weekend. And we start out with the nine seeds, Stanford Cardinal at Boyd and Jill Smith Stadium out in Palo Alto. They hosted a super last year. Elena Vauder, Nigeri Kennedy, their outstanding pitching duel. And they will open up against the Long Beach State 49ers, champions of the Big West, led by Sarah Olson and Shannon Haydad. And they rep the Big West. They will start out in Palo Alto against Stanford, the nine seed. Who is headed out there as well? Loyola Marymount, the Lions champions of the West Coast Conference with Sidney Poole and Morgan DeBoyd. Their tournament gets underway Friday, Saturday, Sunday, double elimination format, and they will open with a road team for the first time under head coach Tim Walton. The Florida Gators are heading out west on at-large selection led by Skylar Wallace and Sharla Eccles. They won on the road in the Supers last year to get to the World Series. Their road will be away from home the whole time, and they've got Stanford to deal with. Yeah, and this is a Stanford team that is just so stingy at giving up runs and really looks ready to build off of what they did last year whenever they upset Alabama at home in regionals. But Nigeria Kennedy is one of the best freshman pitchers in the country, maybe the best with the way that she moves the ball, and their pitching staff is so complete. Top 10 defense in terms of fielding percentage. Again, they are so hard to score against. So there you see it. The Stanford Cardinal are the nine seed. They open up against Long Beach State at home this weekend. How about the 10 seed? And it's back to SEC country with the LSU Tigers, led by Georgia Clark and Allie Newland and Danica Coffey and those pitchers that love playing in Tiger Park down in Baton Rouge, Allie Kilponen and the freshman Sidney Burzon. And LSU gets the 10 seed in this year's tournament. Tiger Park will be rocking first with Prairie View A&M, the Lady Panthers, champions of the SWAC. It was a Destiny Smith walk-off single in the eighth inning to beat Grambling that got them in. Audrey Garcia has been their top hitter all season long. They will open up with LSU on the road. Who else will be in Baton Rouge? The Mavericks of Omaha. Literally the last team in the field because they just finished playing a few hours ago <laughs> as they win the Summit League Championship. Cameron Meyer and Lindsey Tucker leading the way for the Mavs, and they will play the Ragin' Cajuns of Louisiana with their 18th Sun Belt title in 23 years. Lauren Allred, their RBI specialist, had the game-winning home run in the final so it's a rivalry that uh, all those folks in Louisiana are very familiar with the Ragin' Cajuns and the Tigers could get it together again. Well, Beth Carina has a plethora of arms in the pen that she can go to. Ali Kilponen, the senior, has been outstanding. Sydney Berzon, the freshman as well. 
but it's Taylor Pleasant. She's back healthy at that shortstop position. Georgia Clark with the big stick as well. Sierra Briggs in the outfield outstanding. This is a really fun LSU team to watch. They can defend it, they can pitch it, and they can score a lot of runs. And when they're rolling, the Tigers have a big bite. LSU staying at home, Tiger Park, and there are the four, the other three teams that will be with them this weekend. How about the 11 seed? And it's the Arkansas Razorbacks. A fourth place finish after back-to-back -back titles in the regular season this year, led by big hitter Rylan Hedgecock, Shanice Delce, their star pitcher, and one of the top freshmen in the country, Reagan Johnson. They will be home in Bogle Park in Fayetteville to take on the champions of the Ivy League, the Harvey uh, Harvard Crimson led by Riley Flynn, not only the rookie of the year, but the most outstanding player in the tournament as they beat Princeton. They are headed to Fayetteville to take on Arkansas. Three days of double elimination competition. Also in Fayetteville. And it is the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, an at-large from the ACC and one of the final teams to get into the field, led by their power hitters, Jolie Mitchell, Lexi Orozco, and Karina Gaskins. And the Fighting Irish will start out against the Oregon Ducks, an at-large out of the Pac-12 with 18-game winner Stevie Hansen and double-digit home run hitters Tara McGowan and Allie Bunker. The Razorbacks, the home team here, Amanda. Yeah, this is a really young team that was able to find its identity as the season went on and as it continues to go on. Ryland Hedgecock as a first year starter has hit 20 home runs and then also Kylie Halverson, Christina Foreman, those two transfers right in the middle of the lineup adds some punch. Of course, Shanice Delce, one of the best pitchers in the country and last year's SEC pitcher of the year can spin it and get some K's. All right, there you see the 11 seed Arkansas and friends. Speaking of friends, friendship wins in Evanston, Illinois for the 12 seed Northwestern Wildcats and they will be at home at Sharon Drysdale Field to open up their run towards a back-to-back -back trip to the Women's College World Series led by their five super seniors and 100 game winner lefty Danielle Williams champions of the Big Ten Conference and winners of 18 of their last 20 and they open against the Eastern Illinois Panthers in their first NCAA tournament as champions of the OVC, led by pitcher Olivia Price. Also in Evanston, the Red Hawks of Miami of Ohio, champions of the MAC, and home run hitting capital of the country with 91 of them Carly Spade, Allie Cummins, Jenna Golombiewski, the player of the year in the MAC. They can hit it out. Also, the Kentucky Wildcats will be up in the Chicagoland area. SEC at-large choice led by their dynamic duo at the top. Oh, looks like a nice little picnic. <laughs> in their old Kentucky home, Kayla Kowalik and Aaron Koffel, the ones to watch there for the Wildcats. Smitty, it starts with Northwestern. It starts with Northwestern. And it starts in the circle with Danielle Williams, who was so strong last year. And this is a team that can put a lot of runs up on the board. Those five super seniors really know how to swing it. Jordan runs, Skylar Schellmeyer. Angela Zedak, and when they put runs up on the board for Danielle Williams, she doesn't always need a lot of them. The lefty can spin it. She's been outstanding, and she's got that Women's College World Series experience, which is key. And it was Maeve Nelson with the walk-off uh, single to beat Indiana in that Big Ten championship, so they stay at home as the 12 seed. How about the 13 seed? How about last year's runner-up? How about the first team ever unseated to reach the championship series, the Texas Longhorns? An at-large selection out of the Big 12. An amazing freshman class under the leadership of their veteran Mia Scott. Good pitching staff. They've got a lot of tools as the 13 seed. And they will be home at McCombs Field in Austin, Texas this weekend. And they will start out with the Big East champion, Pirates of Seton Hall. And I know my partners are loving this. Not one, but two pitchers that rake. Shelby Smith and Kelsey Carr, who just happened to be the Big East Pitcher of the Year and had nearly 50 runs batted in. Seton Hall's headed to Austin. Who else is going to be there? Well, we'll tell you who else is going to Austin. It's Texas State. The Bobcats get in on at-large out of the Sun Belt. 
led by pitcher Jessica Mullins. Sighs of relief for the Bobcats as they were firmly on the bubble and they will indeed get the invitation and they will start out with the Aggies of Texas A&M and their power hitters Julia Cottrell and Trinity Canyon and Texas A&M and Texas Amanda are both in the same region. Yeah, I remember last year, too, Texas was unseated. They had to go to Seattle. They had an older team because this year's Texas team is so young. A ton of freshmen, and they've just surpassed expectations. Freshmen Leanne Good, Viviana Martinez, Reese Atwood, and Ashton Maloney, as well as Sitlali Gutierrez. I mean, one freshman has stepped up after the next. Don't forget about Mia Scott. She has dynamic speed and is so fun to watch play. Their transfer from ASU, Mac Morgan, has become their ace. We're running low on seeds, folks. Only three of them left. Teams that get to stay home and host the regional weekend starting on Friday, double elimination. How about the 14 seed in this year's tournament? And they'll be blasting it all over Jack Turner Stadium in Athens, Georgia. Wait for it because you know Georgia's a good home run hitting team. They won't be alone there. Jada Kearney, Sarah Mosley, Sydney Kuma combining for nearly 50 taters after a second place finish in the SEC. North Carolina Central champions of the MEAC will also be in town, led by Megan Garrison and Ivory Jones. And shouts of joy for the Eagles as they are dancing with Georgia on Friday. Who else will be in Athens? Well, how about the Boston University Terriers, champions of the Patriot League with a 51 win season. Allison Boaz, Casey Rickard, they're 20 game winners. They are top 10 in the country, folks. Batting average, ERA, fielding percentage, they can do it all. The Virginia Tech Hokies, they got some pop in the bat. They are the top home run hitting team in the nation. They've got five women that have double digit home runs on the season, and that is a home run hitting ballpark. Uh, th th there's going to be a lot hit out there, Smitty. <laughs> there sure are. <laughs> UGA, the, almost a 320 batting average to go along with those 81 home runs. Sydney Kuma, Jaden Fields, Sarah Mosley, they can all swing it. It is just a lot of fun to watch them. Madison Kerr picks in the circle. Very good compliment to Shelby Walters, who is down in the zone. Kerr picks up in the zone. So this is a complete Georgia team as well. All right, so the Bulldogs will be at home and we'll be trying to get back to the Women's College World Series for the sixth time. How about the 15 seed in this year's tournament? The selection committee loves late runs and they love big wins. And Utah fits the bill. If you go by the RPI, the youths jumped over a bunch of folks and they are home at Dunkey Family Softball Stadium in Salt Lake. The most outstanding player of that Pac-12 tournament as they upset UCLA was Mariah Lopez. Who will they start out with? How about the Salukis of Southern Illinois, champions of the Missouri Valley, Jackie Liss, with an OPS of over 1,100 and over 50 runs batted in this year. Utah is at home at Elevation in Salt Lake City, and so are... The Ole Miss Rebels, an at-large selection out of the SEC, led by Tate Whitley and Maya Stevenson. That count is rising for the Southeastern Conference. Do they get all 13 teams in this year? We shall see, but Ole Miss is one of them. And they will start out with the Baylor Bears. Big 12 at-large selection, Shailen Govan, a 380 hitter. They got wins over Oklahoma and Texas. That was a team that thought they might be at home and they will be on the road to take on Utah, Southern Illinois, and Ole Miss. Yeah, and they'll be headed to Utah. This is a feisty Utah team. They have been extremely motivated all year because, quite frankly, they felt overlooked. And for them to gain a top 16 seed is absolutely huge. And a message to the rest of the country, Maria Lopez stepped up big in the circle. She turned a corner about halfway through the season and became the ace, wanted the ball. What an impressive fight that you've seen in Utah the last few weeks of the season. So Utah is home after that big run through the inaugural Pac-12 tournament. All right, it is time. One last seed. This is it. One more team gets to stay home to host a regional, and it will be at McWhorter Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. And the Clemson Tigers, an at-large pick, 
out of the ACC, led by the Player of the Year, Valerie Cagle, who hit 465 with 18 home runs and was a 20-game winner. Good compliment in the circle with Millie Thompson. So Clemson is at home against UNCG, the Spartans, champions of the SOCON, with their most outstanding player, Maddie Spell. Mason Brown and Jesse Shipley, very good home run hitters as well. The last two teams in the field to be unveiled, Cal State Fullerton, the SEC at large, after a third, uh, excuse me, the Big West at large, led by pitcher Micah Sutherland. The Titans will open up against the Auburn Tigers, the SEC at large. A third place finish in the regular season, led by SEC Pitcher of the Year, Matty Penta. Those are your three teams that will be joining Clemson. Well, in Clemson, when you say the word with the Tigers in it, you just got to think about Valerie Cagle. 23 wins on the season, 18 home runs. She can swing it, and she's a great compliment to Millie Thompson, who just throws with so much energy. The lefty, fun to watch in the circle. Mackenzie Clark has 50 runs scored. They love to turn those uh, wins over in that clubhouse. So this is a very complete Clemson team looking to host here. Very excited for him. Check ESPN.com, check NCAA.com. As you see the times now, start times, first pitches starting to show up on your bracket. So there you go, there are your seeds. And if you look at this, if the seeds held, you can see who the matchups would be and what the matchups would be for the Super Regionals. For example, Oklahoma as a one seed would be lined up with the 16 seed Clemson and so forth. Plenty more to come on the selection show and on our 70s after party as well. The celebrations continue. Practice film study. Ah, that can wait for tomorrow. We are on the road to the Women's College World Series. Holly's got the selection committee chair coming up.